This year, in the third Sunday of Easter, we find a text that could arguably be Luke's masterpiece, the pericope of the road to Emmaus. What was Luke's purpose when writing this text, unique to his gospel? Stay with me, and we'll find out. Hello, this is your friend Mauricio Perez. Throughout Easter, in the Gospel in Mass, we learn how to meet Jesus, who died on a cross and is now risen. Last Sunday, we saw how we meet him as the crucified Son of God, and that's why he shows his wounds on every apparition to his apostles, who is now risen, and also by experiencing his mercy through the sacrament of reconciliation, which he instituted then. This time, we learn another way to meet the risen Lord, through the road to Emmaus. We all know the story of the road to Emmaus. Two disciples abandon Jerusalem and head towards Emmaus. They do it downcast, hopeless, and disenchanted, feeling everything they dreamed, hoped, and expected has completely failed. Their master died hanging from a cross. Luke develops the story of his gospel as a long journey to Jerusalem. Taking this journey with Jesus means getting ready to take part of the mystery of redemption that will take place at the Holy City. But today, we see two disciples heading to Emmaus, or rather, and this is Luke's point, they are in fact abandoning Jerusalem. The road to Emmaus itself is the antithesis to Luke's gospel. But it is then that Jesus approaches these two. He explains the scripture to them and later breaks the bread with them. He can then vanish to their eyes while remaining truly present, for they are certain now that Jesus is always present every time they break the bread. This all happens during the same Sunday when resurrection took place. Luke wrote his gospel around year 70 when liturgy was taking shape. Up to those days, it had been a custom for early Christians to gather in the synagogue to hear and explain the word of God. Then they would gather at homes to celebrate the breaking of the bread. As years went by, Christians were not well seen by Jews who didn't convert to Christianity, so it was no longer easy for them to be welcomed at the synagogue. At the same time, more and more people were converting to Christianity from pagan religions who were not used to going to a synagogue at all. So Christian communities needed to find a new place to hear and explain the word of God. Some did it on the road. Some others began doing it at homes already prior to the breaking of the bread. And this is how our liturgical celebration took the shape we know until our days. First, the liturgy of the Word. Second, the liturgy of the Eucharist. When writing his gospel, Luke took the true account of Jesus appearing to those two disciples, which is also mentioned by Mark in his gospel, and elaborated his story as a Eucharistic catechesis. He portrays the liturgy of the Word by Jesus explaining scripture to those disciples on the road as it was a custom when Luke wrote the gospel, and then portrays the liturgy of the Eucharist by Jesus breaking the bread with these two disciples. And all of this is set on Resurrection Sunday precisely to make the point that every time we break the bread, every time we celebrate Mass, we are doing so on the same Sunday Jesus was risen from the dead. The joy and excitement of these two disciples who recover their faith by listening to the word and by breaking the bread is such that they have to run back to Jerusalem to meet the rest of the disciples and tell them, we have seen Jesus and he is risen. Do you want to experience his presence as well? Let's break the bread. And from that Resurrection Sunday until this very Sunday, today, we have kept breaking the bread at Mass to have a true encounter with the living Jesus, the Son of God. Until next time, be passionate about our faith.